Welcome back, Puppet Nerds. Adam Krutinger here. And today we have a surprise video from a guest artist, Leo Rossi. I found him in my Puppet Nerd tutorial Q&A, and he is an amazing young artist building some incredible puppets. And I asked him to do a short tutorial. And here it is. Hello, Puppet Nerds. Leo Rossi here. And today I'm going to teach you how to put together a Cyclops puppet, pretty much like this guy. Let's get started. <laughs> So the next bits of footage you're going to be seeing are me tracing and cutting out the head pattern on some reticulated foam. I'll be cutting out the mouth plates on this stuff, which is some cutting mats, which are a nice sturdy plastic. And then I'm just going to be using some red polar fleece, like this, for the inside of the mouth. Right, so for this bit we've sprayed our mouth plates and we've sprayed our mouth fabric and now they've gone tacky so we've made a little mark, registration mark here. So we're gonna put this mouth, the first plate down onto our mouth fabric and normally on these tutorial videos you'll see Adam sewing in the mouth plate which is a really good method of doing it. Um, I just have a different method of doing it which is gluing the mouth fabric, to the uh, all over head fabric to the mouth fabric which is just my personal preference of doing it so you want to line up everything stick them down and then we're going to put a nice lining fabric similar to this one on the basically the same fabric on the inside with some speed bumps and a head plug which will make your hand really secure in there right so now our pieces of our head have gotten tacky and you might notice that i haven't put any contact glue yet on the chin and the reason for that is i want to trace around pull this bit up when the head is together and trace around it to make the head plug you can you know um glue the head chin in it. it also makes the head plug up and everything else a bit easier to fit in you can do it just glue it all together at once but this is just my personal preference of doing it so i'm just gluing along well attaching the dart which is giving it a nice curve to it now so this will make it all very 3d now let's do the other side just gently Pressing the two bits of foam together, making sure everything lines up nicely. Then we'll go over to this piece and join them at that dart, making starting off making sure these two darts line up. Putting them together. Oh, <laughs> don't do that. Putting them together. And then we'll go to the back side of the head. The front side. And then we'll just pinch along the front and try and getting everything to line together as smoothly as possible. Right, so now we have some regular old upholstery foam, not reticulated like this stuff. Um, I thought I'd just use this for the head plug because it's better than cutting into the reticulated and it doesn't need to be as structurally sound as the main skull. Obviously it's best to use, also it's best to use a much thicker foam, I just ran out of my thicker foam so I'm just going to use up, this up. So now the reason I didn't glue these bits is so I can put it down in a good place and get a base shape to start trimming down on to get it fit to fit in the head. So as you can see I'm just lining up with the foam and then I'm going to trace around there. So just grabbing a 
marker. I'm tracing along like that. I don't think I've got that on the camera, but you can see. I've got on the inside of this. Now this has a thickness to it, so I'm going to have to cut around, measure, put it into the head and keep cutting around and trimming bits off until I get the right size. Just filling in the areas roughly where the, um, what's it called, the chin bits haven't filled in. Right, so now we're going to be lining our head plug and lining the back of our mouth plate to make it really soft on the back of your hand when you're puppeteering. So we've got two bits of fabric here, and we're going to spray everything, spray the back of this, spray this, spray our polar fleece, and we'll tap it all together once we've gone Now that we've got our lined head plug and mouth plate with lining, we can put contact glue all around the edge of this and wet fit it inside here with the lining, obviously this side. So here I've got some reticulated foam tubing, which I'm gonna glue onto the tops of the mouth plates. So it's at like a speed bump, something to grab onto. And then once this with the head plug goes on top, you'll have a speed bump, a head plug, and everything's gonna be lined. It's gonna be really comfortable. Okay, so now that the head plug is in, we can finally close up these bottom chin pieces and you can see the foam head starting to form. This is the Nath puppet pattern from Puppet Things. I'll be using the same pattern apart from the hands and arms, I think, throughout the whole build. So if you want to use the same pattern as me, it's the Nath puppet pattern from puppetthings.com. This is one of the most important parts after the two parts have gone tacky you're just pressing the mouth plate into the foam head folding foam over the edges and just meeting it up flush with and just meeting the mouth plate flush to the foam so here we have our finished foam skull with Head plug, which is lined, lined mouth plates and two speed bumps, so your hand is really nice and secure in that. Um, the idea for the, the linings and stuff was given to me by Phil Fletcher, so thank you so much for that. Um, the main head fabric I'm going to be using is Blue Fuzzell from Puppet Pelts, and the body is going to be just regular generic pink fur, and I'm going to line it and do a neck sleeve with polar fleece. I'll show you how to do all that, but I'm just going to cut out the fabric now, and show you me sewing it all together. So again, here we have our foam skull and some fuzzel. Um, these bits are joined, also known as loop fleece. Um, so we're gonna sew with a Henson stitch from the outs, from the, out, the right side of the fabric to here. And then with a pen, I'm gonna mark all around here, faintly with like a marker. So that way I'll show all this. I'm gonna line this with glue. Then where I've Henson stitched, line as you can see the mouth part with glue on the wrong side and then i'm going to connect them and use the jim henson stitch which is a, just a variation of the ladder stitch to sew up all the darts and seams and cuts that i've made and basically 
honestly you could line the mouth plates and do everything I've done so far but then just sew in the mouth plate if you if that's the method you're more comfortable with working in I just find when you Henson stitch this you don't have to do as much seam picking because it gets a bit more of an invisible line but again it's not as strong of a stitch whatever you like to do more but this is what I'm going to be doing So now it's time for an admittedly quite nerve-wracking part of the puppet, um, gluing in the lip line. So I've lined the top part with glue, and I've lined this mouth area with glue, and then you're just going to press them together. And you really want something neat and symmetrical. So here's the centre of that, so you want to line that up with the centre of your... Henson stitched um, puppet head with the seams all done. Um, the next part is I've just gotten the back part of the neck sleeve cutting out of polar fleece, the front part of the neck sleeve cutting out of polar fleece, and the final for back and front bits. So, with the nath pattern, what you want to do is take the front fur part and match it up to the front lining part. So you want to take the bad side, which is here with the pen marks, and then take obviously the bad weaving side of the fur, match them up and sew them across this bottom line, and then do the same for the back piece. <laughs> Um, so this now that we've got this sewn up, so these sides are sewn up and the neck is sewn up, it's all matching up like this. It's where it gets a tiny bit complicated with all the neck sleeves and stuff. So you want to turn this entire thing that we've just sewn together inside out. Well, right side out. <laughs> like this. Then what you want to do is where you've got the nice soft bit and when you've got the furry bit with your contour of the head you want to just push this into the inside of that so now you've got a nice lined body so you have your body with your polar fleece lining in there and you can obviously kind of gently comb any bits that have been caught while you're sewing into it and then you want to kind of just line everything up the next bit you do, and to attach this to the head, you roll back your covering like this. So you've only just got this foam bit exposed. And you put contact glue all around the edge of this inside lining. And glue it, matching up your registration marks to this bit, to the foam. And then you take your fur and hence and stitch that to the fleece. So that's what I'm going to do now.
So as you can see here, now I've hence and stitched this line all around the neck of the puppet. Right, so for this next bit, I'm going to be making the warts that are on this puppet's face. So to start off with, you want to get these felted shapes. Spheres are better, but ooh, these will work fine. These are tiny little felted, I don't know, kind of <laughs> um, stretched out spheres. I don't know the proper term for what these are called. So what you want to do is just take a pair. Oh, that's an awful pair of scissors. Um, you want to take your pair of scissors and cut off the ends of one of these. Just like that. And then what you want to do is take a, your hot glue gun, just move it here, and put some hot glue on the back of this. Doesn't need to be too tidy. And then you just want to take some craft foam, which is just a very, very thin sheet of L200 EVA foam, and just press it down onto that. And then you want to do a few of those. Right, so now we have seven of these shapes glued onto some craft foam. Just want to take a pair of scissors and cut them all out. So now we've got all our little felted spheres back this craft foam cut out. Here I've got some scrap puzzle from an old little practice puppet that didn't go to plan. So I'm going to use this instead of cutting into some new stuff. And now to cover them in fabric, you just let's go to the edge to be a bit more, you know, sparing of the material. Just put your hot glue gun down, create kind of a little blob of hot glue here. And then press your felted ball in like that and gently go around the edges, covering the ball in your fleece. You might have to put in some more hot glue to get it to meet the edges fully, like I am here. So what you do then, if you've got it like this and it hasn't quite wrapped over all the edges like you'd like, you just cut up kind of a big donut around it and then put some more hot glue around the edges you don't want to put so much hot glue that it leaks through the fabric or that um it kind of the whole material gets a bit too stiff for it to move and fold over the edge you just want to put just the right amount to get everything to work nicely <laughs> don't burn yourself as well because it is quite a difficult bit So no sewing involved for these, which is nice. Just got to make sure you're gently gathering bits of fabric in and not getting any wrinkles and just smoothing it all out. Which is tricky, you might not get it perfectly the first time, but it doesn't take up too much fabric. And if you're using scraps, it's fine as well. So it's okay to make mistakes when you're doing this. It's not, you can always make more. They're very quick. As always, you don't have to use felted spheres for this like I have. It's just I had them in my house and I thought they'd work well for this job. And they also work really nice for noses like that. But you can carve them out of foam if that's what you have on hand. If you have any other ideas or techniques on how to do it. But if you don't have any other materials, I recommend this because you don't have to carve it, alter it at all. Just put a bit of craft foam on there. And there you have a little puppet to wart or blemish. <laughs> see the character really starting to take shape we've got all the warts colored in and shaded and now I'm going to start working on the hands the pattern is here it's Adam Crutinger's brilliant freehand pattern I've just extended it out a bit what I'm going to do is trace this onto Fazal only the hand the rest of it's going to be fur and then just sandwich it in between another layer stitch through it all on the sewing machine then cut it out You'll, um Adam has shown that technique before, it's just much quicker than hand sewing it or tacking it all together and machine sewing all around the fingers. So now I've got four pieces of fuzzel cut out 
and I'm going to lie the, this onto here and stitch through these lines on the sewing machine leaving an area for the rod pocket for, so I can slide in the arm rods and all the poseable fingers and then I've got the same here and I'm just going to sew together both of them and then cut out the fur arms and attach those to the fleece hand. Here we have the fleece arms with the fur hands attached on the wrong side out and here we have the same thing but on the right side out. All that's left to do now is make some foam hands and put them inside of these fabric covers. Here we have two arm rods that I've made. Um, I had made these off camera a while ago and I didn't want to waste them but they're just made with a metal welding rod super glued into a dowel and then everything's covered in heat shrink tubing and that's the hand pattern I'm going to be using to create the foam hands. And I've decided this puppet is only going to have one arm rod and the other hand is just going to be pinned to the body. We have our finished puppet hand almost well yeah finished puppet hand not the arm but this has got a foam hand inside of it with some finger wires so you can pose the fingers the next job is to measure halfway up this arm fill it with stuffing up to like here then put in a stitch in the sewing machine stitch the other part and that way you'll have a nice filled out arm but it'll still be able to move Now that our puppet is nearly finished, the next part is to start working on the eyes. So for the eyes, I've marked my center with the pencil. Don't know if you can see that very well. There you go, just about around the edges. And then I'm going to take a razor blade, tiny pair of scissors, and try and cut along here as evenly as possible. All right, so now we here we have our half sphere eye obviously this joint is a bit messed up so it's going to need a bit of sanding on some sandpaper also make sure to try and not cut yourself like i did when you're using a razor blade to cut a sphere in half sorry that's the dog <laughs> we have our fully sanded eye which looks pretty nice um, normally I'd use the protractor method if I was doing a puppet with two eyes, but since this is a cyclops with only one eye, if I place it, the eyelid may be like at an angle here, I just turn the eye and it'll be, um, you know, even and just a straight line. So I'm just going to cut off or find a bit of scrap fuzzle for the eye and then I'm going to show you how to do a nice little fuzzle line as well to connect it and make it all look, join together nicely. I found a scrap piece of fuzzle, I've got my hot glue gun on, and since if we put this on the eye like this, You'd be able to see the weaving of the fuzzel. So I'm just going to do a little kind of glued hem all across here. Again, just a small amount of hot glue. You don't want it to leak through. Just make the little side. Better do too much hem and do it like too long. But if you do little, better off to be on. Like that, and then now you can't see the raw edge of your material. For this next bit, I'm going to grab some contact glue. <laughs> it's quite a big can and uh, put some all along here and then what I'm going to do is find the distance I want put it on so I have the mark of the contact glue on the eye pull it off then put more contact glue here more contact glue here and then press them together when they're gone tacky that way I don't have bits of contact glue you know over not where you want to be on the eye so I'm going to do that right now Uh, these two pieces have gone tacky, we can press them together. Right, so now we've got our eye covered in an eyelid. We've just got to put the kind of final finishing 
bit on it, which is the kind of eye bag that goes around the bottom. Um, usually in these videos, you'll see Adam casting the eyes out of plastic. I think that's a 10 times better way of doing it than using a ping pong ball. I just don't have a silicone mould that kind of works currently. I have cast eyes before, Adam, like an ice cube mould, which I have behind me. But the ice cube mould didn't get nearly as good of a casting as I'd like. So I'd, they was all bumpy, so I didn't use them. But I'd highly recommend casting eyes. I just don't have the stuff on hand to do it today. So I'm just going to be using the ping pong balls. But I mean, this fabric folding over here gives it a tiny bit more surface area. Still not a big difference, but it's something. So let's just continue for this bit, doing another glued hem. Get some hot glue. And this will make it sure so on your eye bag you don't have any weaving showing. For this bit, you don't really need to stamp any. Actually, yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't really need to stamp any glue. You could even use hot glue to attach the eye bag. I might actually do that, use hot glue instead. As you can see, it's gonna go right around here on the eye, just barely touching the bottom. And that'll just give it a really nice finishing to it. And then you'll wrap the rest of the fabric through this. So let's just cut it on the edge of the hem. Scrap fuzzle is always useful. And then just do a little bit here. Oh. So then all you do is you you'll have a little bit of a glued seam there, but it won't be too noticeable. Well, really not noticeable at all. And you just put the hem around here and chop off your excess, which I'm gonna do now instead of having to deal with it later. Just there. Just a gentle chop. Scrap puzzle. <laughs> Just like that, we have a little kind of eye bag which will finish off the eye really nicely. You might need to stretch it a bit to get it to the edge. Just like that. Now let's glue that and you can use hot glue or contact glue. I think I'm going to use hot glue today. I said I was going to use hot glue, I just tried it and it did not really adhere to this very well at all. Um, it came straight off so you won't see it on the final puppet, but yeah, definitely use contact glue. And here is our 99.9% .9 finished Cyclops puppet. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but yes, um, the only thing I had left to do is stitch on these arms or doll joint them on and ladder stitch up the rod pockets on the arms. Don't know if you can see that there. Um, but yeah, he's pretty much finished. I think I'm not. I think I'm going to do that off camera because it's not a massively interesting part of the build. Um, but the eyes just super glued on here. I didn't record myself doing that because it's quite an intricate part, which took quite a long time and it would have been a really long bit of footage. But here he is all finished. Um, you can go as crazy or as simplistic as you want with the features. You could use this, which is something, which is an idea I got from Phil Fletcher, which is a tagging gun. And you can use it to make these little hairs on the top of the head like that, which are really fun and shade them, which is really cool. Or you can do the spots like I showed you how to do in this video. Or you can add a tongue, which I might do off camera as well. You can add fingernails, you can add legs with little fleece feet. There's so much you can do. Change the colour palettes, change the entire design. This is just the principles of how it's made. I'd just like to give a huge thank you to Adam Krutinger for teaching everyone how to make puppets and letting me make a tutorial for his channel. It's such an amazing opportunity and I had loads of fun doing it. And another big shout out to Phil Fletcher for te teaching me a lot of his techniques and ways of making things like the interiors and parts of like fleece hands and his arm rod making techniques. So a huge shout out for that. But this is the end of the video. If you'd like to see some of the more, more stuff I make, just check out my Instagram at otherworldlyartbyleo. That's where you can see my other puppets. But with that said, see you next time.